This is Tommy Gunn, and this is The Marcus Deegan Show. The Marcus Deegan Show! <laughs> What's the story, my friends? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Deegan. You know where I'm at, Sin City, Las Vegas, the place of bright lights and world title fights. It's the last podcast of 2023. We've had a strapping three months here at Sticky Paw Studios, and I want to send a massive shout out to everyone that's followed us on Spotify or YouTube. The support from you is what keeps this going. We have got some massive shit that I wish I could tell you about that's happening in 2024, but i got to keep my mouth shut and it's fucking killing me. Don't ever tell me a secret, ever. If you don't want people to know your shit, don't tell me because... I don't want to say I've got a big mouth, but I kind of have a big mouth when it comes to secrets. Uh, we've got a different show today. Is it about, is it a fighter? No, it isn't a fighter, but this guy is a fighter. In a sense, he doesn't fight in the ring, but he fights in life. There's so many accolades you could you can introduce this guy as, but he's probably someone from the industry that stood the test of time, that didn't lose it on drugs or alcohol. In an industry that can normally end in badly if it's done the wrong way, and this man has proved that you can step outside of the stigmatism of the adult industry and be looked at with respect. I've known this guy for coming on 15 years now. He's a good buddy of mine. If there's a zombie apocalypse, then you've got to get to this guy's all-terrain vehicle. We're going to find out a little bit about that. One of the legends of the fucking business. Would you welcome to the Marcus Deegan Show, my brother, Tommy Gunn. What's up, sir? Oh, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Marcus. Thanks for having me. It's good. Fuck, you don't age. Well, I see it. You see, we, yeah, well, we see it, <laughs> we don't see we? It. Yeah, absolutely. We are just talking before. How old are you now? 56. I'll be 57 in May. Do you ever yeah. think you would make it to 56? No. You never fucked with drugs and shit though, right? I did. In the beginning and then like in the beginning of your career? No. But Strangely you... enough, the industry, the industry happened after my drug craze or whatever you want to call it. In yeah. fact, it helped me get out of the drugs because I I found something I was like, wow, you know, this is like a real thing. I could uh, I could do well at this, but I certainly can't do it all fucked up and banged up and, and, and you know, so I saw that and realized I've got to be an athlete. I can't, you know, go into this. You mentioned fighter. Well, I, in some sort of an analogy I can't go into a scene, you know, it's a physical thing, right? You can't go in it all banged up and drunk and hung over from the night before. So I treated myself like an athlete, which I've always done. I've been very athletic as a kid growing up, soccer, BMX, all these physical sports and stuff. So, And in, in an industry where guys aren't typically in shape, Tommy, guys aren't typically physique wise, they're borderline shit, really. You were one of the only kind of, the, the, there was a handful of you guys that stayed in shape. Sure. Why do you think that guys in the industry didn't think that it was important for them to be in shape? Well, I don't know if it's an issue of the guys in the industry didn't think it was important enough to be in shape. I think it was just, there was a very critical a talent. If you could keep it up, get it up and keep it up, that was it. No matter what you look like, you can do it, so you're in the business. So therefore, so, you didn't see very many body conscious men there was there were a few but at the time when i got in 2004 i came from the world similar to yourself was the the dancing world yeah and that performing and it's all body conscious stuff and you can't can't be out of shape doing that you're on stage in front of a thousand girls so i'm yeah. gonna yeah i'm gonna do that so i kind of brought that to that industry and was was blessed in the respect where when i got there a lot of the girls and producers and directors were like, wow, look at this guy. He's shaping. And that was going to be my next question. Did it, did it attract like a lot of the female talent because of the way you looked and because, you know, um, you, you, you kept yourself well and you stayed in shape. Did that draw a lot of women to want to, to do work with you? Yeah, it definitely helped. I mean, um, when I, my first, my first, uh, I guess, you know, interaction with the girls was in 2004 or 2000, was it? My dates mixed up. 2004, I came out to, to Vegas. I knew a director that I had met on a previous trip to Los Angeles and because uh, I was seeing this girl and she and I were screwing around and she was a dancer in Florida. I was living in Florida. She and I were and I, she and her 
uh, she and I got intimate. We screwed around, and you know, I can remember her smoking a cigarette after we had sex, and she's like, "Wow, my God!" And I'm like, "What?" She's like, "You should be in porn." And I'm like, oh, "Well," what and you, you had never thought about it? Not really. I mean. You just used to fuck a lot of girls being a male stripper, right? When not you, really. Really? Strangely enough. What the hell? I know. My body count was very low. Strangely. Is that what they refer to? That? That's what the it's called count. now, the body count. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, I don't know. What do you mean? She goes, well, you know, you got you know, good shape. You can fuck really well. And, uh, I made a few movies. And I go, really? She's like, yeah, I go, to, I go out to California quite often, and I've done a couple things. If you ever want to go, I could take you. And I go, really? She goes, yeah. She said, I'm in, in fact, next week, I'm going to go. If you want to go, I'll go for 10 days, and you can kind of drive the, the rental car and carry the bags, carry my suitcase. And once we get to a location or a, st a studio or wherever, you know, you'll just be quiet and get lost and go sit in the backyard or something while I do what I do. And so when I went and I met this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the last day of that trip, you know, I met a few producers and directors and some of the girls. <clears throat> I met this gentleman who was a big director for a company called Wicked. And he, and he basically had the background you and I did. He danced in Canada. Right, So yeah. that's how we connected. Because she got up, we, the three of us went to dinner. She got up and went, so, excuse me, I'm gonna go use the powder room. I said, okay, and she walked away. And then I said, hey man, this girl's thinking about, you know, she wants me to do this business. I said, well, what's a guy like me gotta do to get into this business? He says, well, you know, it's, it's not easy because, you know, everybody thinks they can have sex and, have sex. Well, yeah, it's one thing in, 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 the, in the privacy of your own home, in the comfort of your own bed or whatever. But to do it in front of 30 people with a boom camera, with a boom mic and a camera and a guy right over your shoulder and all these things, that's a whole other story. I said, well, what's the, you know, what, what would I expect? He says, well, your best bet to get into business is you come in with a pretty girl. I said, well, how does that work? He goes, well, the pretty girl is kind of like your leverage. And for example, she'll be your kind of, your, your foot in. I said, well, okay, so how's that work? He goes, well, all the directors and producers, you know, they all want a new, the new, the new girls is always, you know, you know, the new girl, right? Yeah. And then she says, uh, yeah, I'll do a test shoot or this or that, and, but I'll, I only work with him. That would be your shoe in, you know, that would be your opportunity. Well, in this case, that's not how it worked, but long story short, she came back, I got his business card, we went back to Florida, she kind of went her way, I went mine, I still got back into dancing and stuff, and I was, uh, working as a mechanic, doing, uh, building drag race motorcycles for this one racer guy. So I kept this guy's business card. And it was weird because, you know, I, I looked at this card and I'm like, man, this could be a whole new life. But, you know, that world is... Yeah. It doesn't go away. You do something on the internet, it stays forever. So, yeah. so I said, oh, you know, so I kept the, guard, the card. And, you know, every couple months, I'd get this crazy, like, and pull the car down and look at it and go, Mark, maybe call the guy. Hey, man, what's going on? Oh, I'm on set right now. You want to talk to Jenna Jameson? Hey, hi. <laughs> Whatever. You know, you know, have you made up your mind? I go, no, nah, I'm still nervous. i probably not going to, you know, I'll let you know. I'm, I just wanted to call. I said, all right, I'll let you go. I'll get back to what I was doing. I got back to where I was dancing and stuff. So me doing that for four years over the course of a few months every couple months pulling this card out thinking man if I could only just get the courage to do that nah, I don't know. <laughs> so eventually I got the courage after four years of carrying this card around and doing this drag racing and, and, and motorcycle stuff and, and still dancing I decided you know what I'm not getting any younger and I got into the business at 36 which was late for a guy almost 40 years old right so did you go into doing dad stepdad porn straight away no, because that that didn't come to later. Really, <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, it was different. The adult industry has a way of really compartmentalizing everything in it. You know, you know what's uh, you know older guy, younger girl, older woman, younger guy. It's all very yeah. compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. That strangely enough, I think if you can imagine, the adult industry was based on older guy, younger girl, kind of right naturally. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. naturally. So when I got in, there was no. Step this, and it's not step as if you that. looked like an old man anyway. No, I still, looked, yeah. You know, people thought you know, oh, you're late late twenties. I'm like, no, I'm damn near forty years old. And they're like, wow, really? Mm. So, when I got in, I, you know, like I said, my earlier, in my earlier years, 
I had a real bad run with drugs. It was dreadful and lack of better words. I'm surprised I made it through that. What kind of drugs? Coke? Coke, GHB, this and that and blah. You know, I recall literally, honest to God, that, you know, at one point or another in like a day or in an evening or whatever, in the hardcore of my of your fucking being on like nine things. Yeah, 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 right. Like, oh, what's that? I'll try that. Yeah. Boom, what's this? You know, and I, and I still consider, thinking that you're sober. Yeah. Yeah. I consider like alcohol and cigarettes. Yep. A drug. You know, I'd be on acid and taking cigarettes and smoking and drug and cocaine and, and, and uh you know, GHB and this and that and mushrooms. Oh, you gotta be you know, nitrous yeah, you know, the yeah, whole yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's all we did was dance and come home and have a big party and yeah, all and the it, people around in, in, in Florida and stuff. So I managed to Survive that. Yeah, luckily, because a lot of people don't. Exactly. Especially in your industry. Yeah. Especially so in... I did all that before I got into the adult business. So that's good. Or at least the adult business when I say that, because I had a, a stint in the, the dancing world. Right. The Magic Mike world, we'll that, call that. That's, that's you know? coming, that's com- they come hand in hand anyway. That. Yeah, that. so all I had to do at the end of the day was, you know, after taking all my clothes off and leaving one thing on for the girls, this next Step. The next step was taking that off and having having sex in a in the context of a story in a movie, right. which was story driven and wardrobe, and that's what this guy, this what this gentleman did. He, which, which goes back to that movie, that Gladiator movie that I saw, that yeah. was like a full production movie. Remember uh-huh, back yeah. in the day of pirates and stuff sure, like sure. that. Um, that was, and is that what you like? Was that your like what you really wanted to do, the yeah, movies, yeah. like the proper movies with the big production and Absolutely. then do the, fu- yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And so why has that changed now? Well, the reason why that's changed, I believe, is pirating. Pirating in the, in the, in the sense that, you know, you put your content on the website or, or out there on the, on the web, someone snatches it and gives it away for free to everybody. So yeah. nobody was making their money. When I did Pirates in 2005, I was cast to play Stagnetti, which was the bad guy, opposite of Evan Stone, which we all know is a really great guy. Uh, did you say that with true meaning that he's a really great guy? Or oh, you... he's great. Uh, yeah. Evan Stone, is, he's been nothing but a... Oh, he's a, a fucking legend. I saw him at the UFC a couple, yeah, yeah, a couple of months absolutely. ago. He's a mini. He's only this tall. Evan <laughs> Stone. Oh, he's... We're minis. I liked, I liked you know him, though. I, mean? I really... Yeah, I really, he's great. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's kind of what put me on a map. Because there was a time when I wanted to be an actor. You know, I think we all want to be an actor. Some, right. You know, rock star, act star, whatever we was, yeah. it was. I wanted to be an actor. And I thought, you know, maybe if I decide to go mainstream, I'll just be like some little tiny atom in some huge universe. And nobody will know who I am. Maybe, I don't know, that'll be difficult, right? Or I could go into the adult direction and it wasn't such a big world, but yet it was big enough where everybody consumed it, you know? And if I could make a name for myself there, then maybe, again, Hollywood would say, oh, we recognize you. And if the day came when they needed someone, because, you know, Hollywood's always looking over the fence at us. It's yeah. like we have this wall between us. They're always looking over the fence at us, and we're looking over the fence at them. They're thinking, how can we be more edgy and, and have more that edgy content in our world? Hence Sasha Gray. Yes. And then on our side, we're thinking, how can we be more Hollywood, you know, and our productions be more, hence, pirates and all these big movies. Yeah. So I chose to go the adult way. Mm. And it worked. And it worked. And it worked in the capacity where you mentioned someone, Sasha Gray. One day, I was on set, and I get someone who says, hey, man, you know, they're casting for Entourage. I said, really? I said, yeah, they're looking for male porn, porn guys. I said, okay. He says, here's the contact. Here's the number. Call, see, you know, whatever. I called, hey, I'm Tommy Gunn. I, I heard you looking for uh, male, you know, male guys for this this thing and the, the concept was in the movie or in this particular episode Vince Adrian Grenier or, or was with Sasha Gray they were having some iteration you know some uh, you know oh uh, fucking whatever they were you know some whatever the word I'm looking for is uh, some whatever anyway so in the story he wants her to, to get out from that business 
you know, in the mood, in, in the episode. But yet she's like, I'm trying to get back into it. So, and he's like, I don't know if I want that. And he's carrying on all the shenanigans, doing coke and whatever. And this was the episode, season, season seven, Lose Yourself, which had Eminem in that too. So in my, where I was, uh, for lack of better words, if I may back up, what I said about Hollywood Calling was, I went on the casting, I got the sides, went on a casting, did the thing, and everything went great. And they were like, all right, we'll let you know what happens. And they walked away and left, and I saw a couple other guys on set. So, I, or, you know, waiting to do their, their audition. So I left. And a day goes by, and I see another producer, another guy, and he says, hey, man, I heard they're looking for a, a Tommy Gun type male porn star. I go, what do you mean, Tommy Gun type? He goes, yeah, that's what it says on the call sheet. We're looking for a Tommy Gun type. <laughs> what? Really? And I said, get the, what do you mean? They go, well, evidently. An Italian guy with a big cock and a brown physique. You know what I'm saying? Evidently, you were the, the benchmark of yep. what wow. they wanted to find. And I said, that's funny. I went down there and nobody said anything about, oh, you're Tommy Gunn. They just... So the next day, he says, yeah, they're looking for some Tommy Gunn. Type. I said, that's awfully strange. So my <laughs> point is, I did something enough in the business to make Hollywood go, Hey, well, we need Tommy Gunn type guy to show up to yeah. be the. So in the in this episode, Sasha Gray's supposed to be doing this photo shoot, this big gangbang she's supposed to be doing, and there's so there's the, there they are on this photo shoot set, and uh, Vince shows up and she's like, "What are you doing here?" She's like, "He's like, I'm here to support you." She's like, "Yeah, I'm sure. You're here to cause trouble." He goes, "No, I promise. I swear." He says, "Okay, you just better behave yourself, basically," and he says, "So where is the asshole?" She's like, what? I, 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 see, I knew it. He goes, but, no, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding, joking around. She goes, he's over there. And then in the episode, if you've ever seen it, we're in the background getting ready for this photo shoot. And it's a bunch. It's me and 10 other guys or whatever, shirtless, jeans on, whatever. And she goes, be nice to him, basically. And she goes, hey, Vince. They gave me the same name as Vince. And Hey, Vince. I go, hey, what's up? She says, come here. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. I walk over to, to Vince. The other Vincent, I go, oh, hey, Vince, how you doing? He goes, good, how you doing? I said, oh, I'm all right. He says, hey, I'm a big fan. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I can't say the same. I've never seen any of your work. I said, well, I've seen all of yours, even Medi Ian. And he gets all puffed up. He goes, what are you being an asshole? Because Medi Ian was a flop. Right. Well, that's what Doug Ellen had asked me to, that was the, that was the line. He wanted to intimidate Vince. So I did, and I did the thing, and it went well, and everything was, and I still get recognized for that, that so thing. Is it on YouTube? Uh, you can find it. It's out there. But that's what I meant about, I guess, making somewhat of an impact in the adult industry enough for when Hollywood said, hey, we need to fill these shoes. Yeah. Let's get a Tommy Gunn type to do it. How many so, times did you step over to mainstream? I've been, I've done, let's see. I've I, seen you on a couple of things. I've done a thing called Wolves, which with Jason Momoa and Lucas Till we all know who Jason Momoa is. He just came out with Aquaman. And he's done a number of other things. So I worked with Jason Momoa and Lucas Till in a movie called Wolves, 2015. Mm. Uh, the producer was Steve Hoban. Director was David Hayter, Copperheart, and Canada. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine was a, was a stunt guy. And so they cast me in that. We had to put up a fight to get me on board because they were like, why do we need an American actor if we can just get a Canadian guy to play this role? And it was a small little part. I play it. It would be like you and I being bikers playing at this truck stop scene. Okay. And the, the lead, Lucas Till, is a wolf or he's slow, he's turning into one. Right. But he don't know how to fuck what's going on. He's having these moments where his body's changing and he can't figure it out. Yeah. So one day while he gets out of this, he hitchhikes and gets out of this big truck at this truck stop and he goes in and he's watching the TV and there's the news about some kid who killed his parents and that was him because he's fleeing uh, and he hears and he leaves and he hears some some, some commotion uh, some girl getting smacked around <laughs> anyway he he makes his way through this trucks and the way they're parked and he comes to this mo this this area where this moment is me smacking this girl around me and <laughs> me and the coast my other yeah the opposite uh, guy playing the biker and we're smacking the stunt girl around who played the girl and he pra he basically interrupts that moment and says hey what are you doing and i said i back up and go D beat it kid he goes you hit her again you're going to lose that hand and then you see his hand change from a male from a from a uh, uh, a human hand to a wolf 
and we see that's the first moment when he changes into a wolf, and then we'd have this exchange. He kills me off and kills the other guy. I shoot him in the ear. Or okay, so I, I'm, I'm trying to remember correctly, but I remember sitting at home, I was watching, and it might have been that, and I'm yeah. going, fuck, oh, there's Tommy Gunn. What the yeah. fuck's that guy doing? Yeah, yeah. That's such a good feeling when you're sitting at home and yeah. you don't expect it, and you see one of your mates on TV in a right, movie. That's right. fucking. So, so what, what happened with um, what happened with the hedgehog? Um, the porn star, Ron Jeremy. We'll get into that. Okay. Uh, other mainstream things I did. Was, okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Was, uh, just want to, you know, finish that question you had asked me. There was another one I did called uh, Gangsterland. It was the latest. I think it was in 2019 or something. It was with Milo Gibson, Mel Gibson's son. Oh, okay. Jason Patrick, Michael Pere. Nice. Timothy, Timothy, why am I drawing a blank? Anyway, the director. Right. Uh, nice. And I played uh, Mayor Deaver. You know, it was entirely mainstream. Yeah. And Do you have an agent that gets you these gigs? You know, I don't. And I would like to get one, but I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a little disheartening type of period of time. When I was taking acting classes, I was working, I was living in California, working, doing, uh, and, you know, moonlighting and doing some acting, trying to get some better chops at acting because... You know, it's not a bad thing to hone yeah, that skill. Yeah, absolutely. Craft, definitely. It's fucking hard, though. Yeah, so I went and I was working with Leo Snyder and or, uh, Leo Rossi and Steven, Steve Snyder. He had a little acting workshop. And everybody knows Leo, Leo Rossi from, you know, the, the, the wise guy stuff. Anyway, so I went and did work with them. Anyway, so I thought, you know, I need an agent to represent myself. I, I can't just show mm. up to places where they got to. So I went to this one agency. I can't remember the, the name. I was, it was, uh, I was recommended by a gentleman, uh, Tara Patrick's boyfriend. He says, I got a guy who represents her. Ross. Go see him. Ross? No. Her husband, the bullheaded guy, the musician? Oh, that was Spider. Spider. Yeah. 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 He says, I got a guy, go see him and see what he says. So I said, okay. I call up, hey man, I'd like to make an appointment. Sure, no problem. And I go down and, you know, nice place and you know, thinking, oh God, him. Hope I'm dressed, you know, whatever. And he says, okay, hey, come on, you know, I'm here to see such and such. Oh, okay, sit down. I'm, next thing you know, hey, how are you? Brings me back, and I walk through this, what felt like a, like some newsroom with all these desks and all these people that, I guess they were the other agents. Big place. And he brings me into this place, and opens the door, and he sits me down, shuts the door. Nice windows, and just really beautiful place. And he says, so what are you trying to do? I said, well, I'd like to do some acting, you know, I, I, I like it. I'd like to do it. I feel like I'm trying to, trying to do it. I feel like I can do it. He says, uh, well, you know, it's going to be tough with your background, what you've done. That was going to be our question. Did he know that said, you had done porn? Yeah. Yep. And I said, well, what have I, what have I, what have I done? I'm not a, I didn't murder anyone, mm. you know? He says, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's the stigma, it's the, it's the porn, it's the adult stuff. I said, well, I mean... It's a legitimate business. It's not like we're doing anything that's illegal or anything. And uh, makes way more money than mainstream does. Even more, <laughs> yep. strangely enough. But anyway, I said, so I need, a, I need an agent, somebody who could represent me. He says, well, we, 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 we basically vote by a committee. If they want to take your business on, yeah, fuck it. He said, so odds are that probably won't happen. He says, but if you ever have a set that's close, you can let me come visit. I'd love to check it out. I'm like, yeah, right. Anyway, so I kind of got disheartened and thought, fuck it, you'll do it yourself. No agents want to represent a guy like me. Or maybe they do nowadays. And I challenge one. Hey, if you're an agent out there and you're a good one, I challenge you to take me on as as a client. And uh, that would be a challenge to, to get me. I've done a few things, you know. Entourage ain't a bad gig. Pi- yeah. uh, Pirates and all the big other movies. and Gangster Land, mm-hmm. Bulls, and all these other stuff. And uh, I'm not a bad actor. So. Yeah. Do you think that, w- what else has it affected in your life, the stigma? Has it affected relationships? It has. With women? It has in the capacity that, you know, in the business... I've been married outside of the business. I've been married in the business. In the business, you can imagine, it's tough with your wife or your girlfriend 
to have disagreement like, hey, hon, uh, I'll see you. Kiss her goodnight. Kiss her in the morning. I'm going to go and work with somebody. But she's also in the business. Let's not forget. That's, that's how I met my wife and a few of the girlfriends that I had after that. And they're doing it too. So, But maybe women are wired differently. I'm not sure. but They can, ha- they can take it more? They can handle they it better? They can't. In my they- case, they couldn't. Like I dealt with them going to work. Yep. And knew yep. it. I knew it was fine. Like I support you, hon. Go do your thing. And my only problem, or not problem, but my only concern that I had was, is that the guy that she's paired up with that day being nice to her. Right. So I not w- is she gonna like what she's doing? I would have thought, is she gonna like him better than me? That didn't matter. That didn't that matter to didn't you? Ca- no. She's obviously did. She's with me. We married on me. So you just you you were worried that someone was going to disrespect her or, or physically hurt her in the yes, scene? Yes, because, or- you know, girls will say, hey, would you mind not going too hard or something? Or don't smack me in the face or be a little more whatever. And you never know what guys whisper in their ear like, you know, screw that guy. Be with me. Yeah. But uh- that... You know, because I didn't want to have to go knock on some guy's door and say, hey, man, you know, my girl said she worked with you and you've been, you didn't, you know. Yeah. I mean, well. I think for the average man, they don't understand exactly what you would have to go through. Not as a man, but also having your partner in the industry as well, especially, I mean, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but I think it would just drive you fucking crazy. If there was a male talent that you fucking hated and did not like, yet you knew they were doing a scene with your woman, that alone has got to just absolutely mess with your well, head. It has to. You can't be normal after No, of course, absolutely. That, that, well, I mean, I just, you know. You have a, you can block it off. You, like, would you just, watch their movies? Would you watch their scenes no, after, I, after the fact? No, nah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. You would like never said, watch your girlfriend's scene after she had shot it? You, it, it because of why? I just didn't have the interest or. Yeah. That's the point. You know, it's like me coming home from work. Hey, how was work? I'm home early. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a don't ask, don't tell. Mm. Not, oh, it was great. She did this and did that and her this and that and she's great. Oh, my God, you should see. I don't get into yeah, you don't do it's better that way. And, and vice versa. Yeah. I don't want to know, and, mm. but that's fine. In fact, let's say you and I were in the business and I knew she was working with you one day. I'll be like, yes, she's working with Marcus. She's going to be home early and he's not going to be a turd. Right. And he's my boy, right. and he's going to be respectful. Versus, right. she's working from some dude I don't know, and you know, well, yeah. that's fine. I'll, as long as it's her, it's mm. her, it's her thing. Yeah. So for me, when it came to the flip side, when the problem I had with myself, with with my situation was my my wife at the time, was which a, was Ashlyn, right? No, this was a. a Rita Faltiano, she was a big Hungarian actress and huge in, in Hungary and a beautiful girl, wonderful, great spirit, all of it, just awesome. She had a huge career in, 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 uh, in Europe, big movies, the whole everything. But when she came to America, maybe she didn't have as much uh, recognition or it yeah. was a little more difficult to, yeah. get, to get. And for me, I was just, you know, Brand new guy coming up, working all the time. So she may have been suffering from not working as much from having been a big star there. In Europe. Coming to America, having a hard time, and then seeing me work all the time. And then, you know, she knew I had a good reputation with the girls. So maybe she starts to think, you know, I Mm. wonder why they all like you. Like, what are you doing that's so good? I'm like. I'm a nice guy. I'm not being a turd. I'm not, you know, because I'm, nice I'm just being nice to him, you know. I'm fucking, is, I'm fucking him real good, but I'm being nice at the same time. Oh, no, well, you know, at the yeah. end of the day, it's, I always looked at it like whoever I was working with, or I was teamed up with, you know, in one way or someone might think, I, I looked at it like she was in, she was in my care. Yeah. She was in my, yeah. in my, yeah. because I always, Considered myself, you know, the women are the marketing yep. of the of the of the, the business. Mm-hmm. I get it, mm-hmm. but the men, uh, the analogy I made was, the women are like the picture on the wall, yep, the art, but the guys are the frame, yep, and together we make the whole wow. Look at that thing, right? Yep. 
Together we make the whole thing. Or another analogy was, she's the cheerleader, and I'm the male cheerleader. And the girls rely on the guy to take them, throw them up in the air, and do all these amazing tricks, and look really great, and catch them so they don't come crashing down. Yeah. How That's you, the guy's job. Yeah. How do you not fall in love with all these women, these beautiful women? Like, how is it, how do you, when you do such an intimate connection as having sex, how do you not get feelings for these girls, especially the ones that maybe you have seen from afar and gone, fuck, I can't wait to work with her. How do you not catch feelings? Well, for me, I did. You did catch feelings. Well, I kind of let it, I kind of, I kind of did in order for it to work. Right. That was my mindset. Was like, like just, feeling like you cared about them. Mo- it's like a special moment between her and I. It's not, we're not falling in love or whatever. I mean, that's how I met my wife, Rita. We had great chemistry and I was like, yeah. wow, and this and that and this and that. And I pursued her and she told me no, 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 no. And eventually I said, I'm not quitting. I'm coming after you and make, I want you to be my girlfriend. And eventually she gave in. But it's a strange psychology for me, at least as a guy, when it comes to working with a girl, you know, uh, the more, I can, in my mind, just have a bit of a, you know, this, uh, whatever you want to call it. A connection? Yeah, chemistry, man. It's real. Mm. And it's, even if it's a brief moment, it's a 45 minute thing, you know, and we have a great chemistry and some you don't as much as others because maybe you don't know what's going on with them, why they're there, Mm. who knows why they're there or not or whatever. So that's how I managed to be. You know, successful again, in what you're doing and, and being able to keep it hard is because yeah. you actually try to have a, a real connection with sure. them for that moment of where you're swapping. Absolutely. It. I've oh, actually I worked with a bunch of guy, uh, girls where the guys would say, she's a bitch. Mm. And I go, and in my mind, I think, well, maybe to you. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what your deal was. Mm. So I'm not going to let that be yeah. something that prevented me from. Yeah. So I said, let me see how I deal with her yeah so and then i would get on set and i'd think okay she might be ex ex, uh you know uh exuding some of these qualities about real you know just uh standoffish or whatnot i just kept a Mm. cool sense of myself and i wasn't whatever and eventually i broke through and had great scene and i go i don't know what you meant about she was a bitch because i got had great yeah yeah so i didn't let that Yep. Because so it's all about that. It's right. About no, it would have to level, be. And, you know? and if, if you can see that you're having a connection with whoever it is that you're on the set with, the audience can see that as well. And it actually means That's a lot the, more. The, if you were doing a 45 minute scene, for instance, how many times do you stop and start during that 45 minute scene? It all depends what you're doing from a movie standpoint. If you were just doing a fuck scene, what, if do it was you go, a gonzo, gonzo, gonzo is basically boy meets girl. Yep. No, hey, hi, hi, where none yep. of that shit. Yep, just straight into it. You know. Yep. Straight into it. Yep. And if you did it right, you don't have you don't to st- cut at all. Really? Okay, that was my question. So how do you I mean, I suppose you're used to it. Now these are questions, common questions that I know that the men that are listening to this want to know personal questions about this. And then we're gonna we're gonna shoot over to you in a minute, Chase, because there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Um so Viagra, is it used by everybody? They say it's not, but is, obviously that would be a common thing, Viagra or Cialis or something You know, like that. it's like driving without insurance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like, could do it, Yeah, but what's the point? Yeah. And yeah. I'm not saying, you know. And you don't, you don't do it? No, I use some here you, and there. Yeah. It all depends. Yeah. It all depends. On the girl it's, it's or? It's by no means like a, it's by no means one of those deal breakers were like, oh my God, 20 years in the business and you've, you, now I'm discovering you took that. You know what? Shh, take, yeah. your, take the S off your shirt. You're not yeah. Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a liar. Because it used to be hidden, know. right? Was it like a hidden thing? Like no one knows, it's like steroids, right? No one knows you take steroids. No one knows you took Viagra you know either. It's, it's one of those things. It's all, it's a guy thing. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm so cool. I can do it without anything. You know what? Great. But when you're trying to work and you're fucking on the hood of a car, in 110 degrees and there's all this shit going on and they cut every two minutes because they got to come in and fix her makeup and do, you know, it's. And you got to stay like that. Yeah. It's like, it's a performance enhancing drug. You see, you're going to, you know, what other, what other companies Mm. or, or I'm sorry, industries or, or that the guys, 
Everybody uses it, right? Yeah. In, in whatever capacity, right? It's yeah. like for your car, you stick this good stuff in and it runs better. Why not do that as a guy or as a, as a in whatever you do, like baseball? I don't know. Maybe but it just seems it would come up. down upon like, oh, you can't. Nah, if you're if you're in the industry, I reckon it would be, you would just have to do it. Which is a great segue into today's episode is proudly sponsored by Riz Pharma. Rizpharma.com for all your male wellness needs. Yeah. If you want to have a penis like Tommy Gunn, then all you got to do is go to these guys. Riz if, if you can't get it up. Riz Pharma is the place to go to if you're losing your hair, if you want to lose a bit of weight, if you don't want to get your girlfriend pregnant, rizpharma.com. It's an online pharmacy. All of your pharma, uh, the pharmaceuticals, all of your medication gets delivered to your front door discreetly. Use my promo code MDS and you're going to get 15% off. Nice. So Chase was uh, talking to me earlier on and I made sure that I asked him if he could engineer this episode of right. you and I. And uh, I told him about you. And uh, Chase wants to, and is seriously wants to be in the industry. Yeah, that's the true. Yeah. The first thing I asked him was, is um, which is a, I, I don't know if this is what they normally ask male talent. Okay. How's your cock? Is it big? And he said yes. And um, I said, okay, great. Well, I suppose that's one of the first things. So, um, Chase, do you have any questions for this fucking legend of the game that maybe uh, you know not not a lot of people can get the answers to because they're not a stud like this man? Are no. you so? First of all, are you serious about really doing it? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to give it a shot at least, you know. Yeah. But uh, so I guess very similar to how you were asking uh, uh, that director forever ago, you know, what sure. would a guy like me, you know, uh, need to do to, to be in the industry? I'd... Well, here we are 20 years later. Yeah. yeah. Now the industry has, I guess for lack of better words, made itself so more readily available because of these platforms, uh, you know, these other, the OnlyFans, many vids, these other clips for sale, all these other things, uh, you could just, you know, find some some pretty girls that you're friendly with or, you know, whatever, that are consensually want to do the same thing and shoot something out your house. Uh, you don't have to be, unless you really want to get into the to the mainstream uh -huh. world of it and end up being an actor and, and get cast as a, in this case, you would be, uh, how old are you? 25. Okay, you might be a younger guy with an older MILF situation, right? Yeah. That happens a lot. Maybe Tory Lane or, 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 uh, or uh, who's, who's the other one that we're going to get into? It's Phoenix such a Marie. different, things have changed so much. Yeah. But what can he do? What, what, what can he do? Like suggestions first. Like obviously you said to, you know, shoot it at home. For, the barrier know. of entry now is way different. Uh-huh. It's not as, as tough, I don't think, to get into business. Right. You so know? shoot something with a girl that you know, produce it, shoot it. See, that's the, that's the thing there, though. How do you get a, how do you get a girl that, that you know to fucking come over to your house and shoot a porn? Befriend a couple Yeah. by virtue of who you are and how you're related with Marcus and the podcast or whatnot. And so you say, hey, you know, I do this and I'm this and that. And, I, you know, I'd love to potentially do something. Someone might say, oh, really? You know, you're, you're a legitimate guy, you know. Yeah. You're not some you know, unknown guy because you have the background of this, you know, it's kind of legitimate. And plus he, he, he's an opera singer in church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> also a thing, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> what is it? Tenor? Uh, baritone. Baritone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> I can tell you had that real yeah, deep. Yeah. I, so, I mean, is there, if you can point him in a direction, if you can give him, give him an email. Let, let Come us... to the Vegas convention. Oh, when's Walk that? When is that on? 24, 25, 26, Are you going to be there? I will be there. This is a good segue for you to pull up that photo that you had that I sent Perfect. earlier on. Yeah, so yeah. Let's see if you remember this, Tommy. Wow. Holy <laughs> mackerel. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I remember. That was 2013, my brother. Yeah. I'm just... Time just waits flies. for no man. I don't know who the fuck I'm supposed to be right now. <laughs> what the He's fuck? He's like... What, what the, is that? I look like, like a gay, John McEnroe like a gay or Rod Stewart. <laughs> gay Rod Stewart. John McEnroe or yeah. whatever. But uh, yeah, that was at the AVN Awards in 2013. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that, that'll be our next thing then, Young Chase. We will hit up Come the over. We'll hit up the AVN Awards we'll and Tommy can around. Yep. And you can and, introduce you know, us to a few people. That'd be cool. A couple yeah. girls and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. At the end of the day, you know, the girls are, they need to produce content. You know, like I said, a lot of them have gotten out of, I don't say out of, shooting mainstream where you show up to set and you've got the director and whatnot. They've a lot of different platforms have uh, come, you know, come to the, the, the surface now where you can, 
do like stuff. Only, only fans and stuff like that. You yeah, mean, you yeah. can do stuff. You do any of that? Own... You do any only fans? I do, but it's hard to get some of the girls to. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions that you have about that you'd like that you're curious about, Chase? Like, well, you know, uh, I guess, you know, a particular struggle with me for this sure. is like, uh, I do have like, you know, Obviously, I do all of this tech stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. I do. I have a vast understanding of how all of this works, and then uh -huh, I also uh -huh. do all the social media for people. Sure. So it's almost like if I do the OnlyFans stuff, do I just go in with the angle of you know, uh, uh, should I just run your OnlyFans rather than uh, you know, be star in it? You know, you r what run who? Is yours or the girls? The girls. You know, run. Well, I mean, they need to have partners, male talent, or whoever to. To do stuff, certain things and whatnot. So there is a way. It's not impossible. Yeah, so, you know, I just need to find the person. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely more. It's de what I would suggest is get out there, introduce yourself. You know, it's definitely more prevalent. Yep. Than years ago, it's like the barrier of entry is tough. You could even get with an agent now. There's so many. I'll give you a list of who they are at that rate. You can just call them up and say. Or you don't. It it, it all depends if you want to dabble in it or whatnot. Or you know, I will. I always thought, you know, I, I, I produced, I had assassin pictures years ago. I tried to do directing and whatnot and stuff. And I, I you know, I kind of got lazy and was like, ah, I'm just going to show up, do the thing, be yeah. paid and be done with it. Yeah. But now after 20 years in you know, Hall of Fame and all these other, yeah. you know, Accolades. awards and whatever you want to call it. People say, you still don't have your own website or something like that. You should be putting your name on something, you know, Tommy Guns, whatever, or Tommy, whatever. So... I don't know. Maybe there's, yeah. Maybe there's something there. And maybe you know, one last question. You know, looking back on everything, you know, and this is a, uh, this might be a little bit deep, I guess. But like, uh, sure. do you regret anything with it? Do I regret anything? I think uh, a couple things here and there. I wish I'd have done something different. You know, and we all wish we'd have done certain things differently, like mm. save every penny. You, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> the, mo the mo you could have been a bit smarter with the money. Yeah, but you know, at the time, you're like, "Well, yeah, it's happened so quick. It was coming in, going yeah. out, yeah, coming yeah, in, yeah, going yeah. out." Yes. I'm like, "How about this? I'm going to start a company. Sure, yeah. Pay, you know, assassin pictures, try to make movies and stuff. Would I have done some different things? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do I feel now about having been 20 years in the business now, and you know, uh, have you? Have you, you haven't asked me how has it affected my family life or my friends or my whatnots. And, and, well, I, you know, I wanted to delve into your family because I know that uh, your mom, you've lost your mom. Yeah. I know that was very difficult for you. And I lost my dad too, so I, I can empathize with you. I know what it's like. It's rough and it, and it, um, it's, it, no, it, yeah. it's like they possess a, they took a spot up on earth. Like yeah. we sit, you know, here we sit, we, yeah. we, we take the space, we occupy the space yeah. Yeah. and we know it, right? And yeah. now they don't yeah. at all. Not right now, like, not in the physical, but in, definitely you know, in, in the spiritual. But in your brain, you know, in your mind and your heart and stuff, yeah, they they exist. And the more you think about them, and the more that you know, that's yeah. how you keep them alive and stuff. Yeah. And, and but how spirit. do you? Um, how do you? How how were they with what you did? How was your mum with it? She didn't know I got into it. So at all ever. Nope. She passed away in '94. Okay. I was dancing. Yeah. She okay. had come out. Yeah. She had come out to one of our gigs and watched me dance for the girls and stuff, and we doing our acts and. You know, she had this little grin on her face, like, oh, my God, I can't believe my yeah. son is finally not shy anymore. Yeah, so yeah. So that was nice. What about Dad? And Dad, uh, when I first got into it, uh, it was maybe a year, two, two years, three years. I finally said, hey, Pop, you know, I'm out in Los Angeles, and I'm doing some production work and film stuff. And, uh, yeah. I, uh, I got into the, the adult business, and I was making some movies and stuff. Really? I said, yeah, you know, and I don't think he had, he knew at the time when I had, when I had expressed this to him. And I, I always have a hard time talking about myself in a, in a, in a, in a capacity that's, that's, you know, I'll say it and you can kind of get an idea for it. You know, I, I hate to, I hate to talk to my, talk about myself in such a, yeah, in an elevated way. No, I understand. But I said, Dad, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I'm like Tom Cruise in the business. He was like, what do you mean? I said, I'm, I'm winning all these awards and I've been, you know, that's what I, I'm hailed as that type yeah. of, I got, I did, I was that successful. Mm. And, and 
you know, and again, I feel stupid saying it, all those types of things. But yeah. He was like, oh, well. So, so, but he never saw, like, yeah, he never saw you, he never saw a movie, obviously. No. no. Is he I still around? Is he still around? Yeah, he's, I'm going to go visit him uh, tomorrow. I fly there. And nice. He lives in Florida. And uh, I've always had a hard time, you know, talking about myself yeah. in that capacity. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm just some small town kid from Jersey who came out and yeah. wanted to pursue something and ended up in that world. And they said, okay, stand here and wear this and say these things and do that thing. And then I did that over and over again. Yeah. And eventually they were like, you're him. You're that guy. And yeah. get up on stage and win this award. And yeah. I yeah. still am just... Yeah, and you find Deep it hard. To, yeah, you just still, Tom, just Tommy. I'm yeah, still Tommy. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so very humble. like over. Yeah, well, that's. that's I mean, no one likes a fucking big head. Yeah, right. No one I does. Because right? there are plenty of them out there. Fuck yeah, there is. You're talking to one right now. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Uh, but, so, if was there ever one particular girl in the industry that you're like, oh my god, I've got to work with her, and then you finally did work with her? Who would? Who would? Was there a? Was there a? Because you're the. There was a few of them. You mentioned Janet Jameson earlier on. I never, you she, never she's the one her. that got away. Janet yep, Jameson. Never worked with her. I worked Ashlyn, under her. Ashlyn Brooke, you work with? Yeah. Uh, I worked with Tara Patrick, Janine yep. Linda Mulder. Oh, you Julia worked with Janine? Ann, Lisa Ann. And all Lisa the Ann. Dasha, uh, a lot of the big, big yep. names. Uh, Sonny Leone, who's now a huge. Poly Bollywood star. Yeah, she's, she's uh, over in Bollywood now, right? Huge Bollywood star. Every day, I get inundated with this clip that she and I did uh, a video of. I caught her between, I think, relationships, because typically she would only do girls. So somehow or another, she was ending one relationship, and maybe, who knows how far along afterwards that she got into another one, but I caught her in the... In the at, in this moment where she was going to do guys. Yeah. And I got a, a friend of mine who was a producer for Vivid. He says, hey, man, you know, I got you lined up with Sonny Leone. Get, get out of here. Stunning. And Absolutely what I discovered stunning. was she and I share the same birthday, which was kind of neat, May 13th. I yeah. thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, so I always, so here I was, cast, set up to work with her. The only thing that was not terrible about it was this company was condom only. Right. So I was this close. To getting that, yeah, this close. This thin. Nearly. About, Come on, know. mate, you know how to pop them just as well as you know I do. I mean? There's a certain angle you can push it in and pop <laughs> those fucking things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we had such great chemistry. And, and so just once you worked with it, just the once? Just that one. No, yeah. twice. Do you ever, do you ever go back? time, and, and I never got to touch her. It was only in the scene where I was with the girl and she was with the girl too. So oh, okay. we never had particular yep. sex yep. at that point. So do you ever go back and jack off looking at any of those old videos or was it the same Not thing? Really. You don't go back to nah. it? Do you ever do that? Do you even watch porn? I mean, like if you need what's funny was I never really watched it. I only liked pictures, like, right. a, like a photograph. Right, right, right. You're old school. <laughs> like I would be on the computer like yeah, looking yeah. Just a photograph, right. like a video. To me, was kind of like oh, yeah, it's because kind of, you've done it, right? Isn't cool that bizarre? You just but this was it. before the business, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was a handful of really big name stars yeah. that I was blessed to had, had to, to work with. And some, some weren't as wow as I, yeah, was, as I thought it would be. Any bad fine. experiences? Like any? Oh, like, I've had multiple bad experiences. I've heard about like girls accidentally shitting on guys and stuff like that. Well, that comes with the territory. It's you know you're you're. So that does that does happen? Oh, absolutely. Right. That's okay. So, and that doesn't bother you? Know, you? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's got, it can't be. You, you, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have. You gotta have a. You fucking, gotta have hey, a strong talk, constitution. Listen, I talk about mindset on this show all the time, okay? Because I'm fascinated by the human brain. And for you to be able to stay hard while someone took a shit on your penis, you know, that shows saying? a strong mindset right there. Well, yeah. if, you know, imagine we're in a reverse position, and she's on top, facing you. That's yep. called cowgirl, right? right? That's what we call it. Well, in this case, if it was a an anal. Scene. Cowgirl. Gravity. Gravity. You know, yeah. and then they, it's, a, bless their hearts, they go in and they try to prepare as much as <laughs> plus, plus possible. <laughs> they go in and they do the whole thing, Imodium yeah. AD, the whole the night before, ritual, right? Stop all eating. that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. dreadful for them. I, I feel bad. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't always work right. and clear out or whatever. So, you right. know. 
So what, some of these scenes where you're doing it and you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's like certain uh, things that you know you come off the thing, you come off the dick or whatever, and then oh god, look at that. Oh yeah. my god, sorry. So what do they just so clean bad. it and then cut, reshoot it again? Cut. She gets off. I get off. I I clean up. She goes and does her thing in the in the restroom and try to clean herself even more and then we determine oh that might not work and let's not do that or this right but i felt i feel bad plenty of times where they felt i'm sure they felt terrible yeah. and i'm not i don't want to embarrass them yeah. anymore like oh god what's so you know. that's probably the most this kind of disgusting thing that can, can kind of happen to you upset so on set so here's another question that you might feel uncomfortable answering but i've got to ask it anyway because i know in this day and age it's different would you ever shoot with a trans woman i'm just i'm i i mean Again, I wh whoever wants to do what they want to do, but for me, I just not your thing. Uh, you wouldn't do it with a tranny, trans woman. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I mean, chick with a dick just doesn't do it for you. No, I. It's it, even if the if, if the money was big, it's still just not a line that you. Like how how much? <laughs> <laughs> Millions, so I can retire. All right. There, there is a market for it, though, right? Trans porn. Of course. Trans. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Uh, look. To each his own. Yep. Uh, I don't want to cut caught in the crossfire of all that that conversation. But do straight do straight male performers cross over to doing trans porn? And if they are, are they looked few. at differently in the I've straight? I've seen a few, and that's, yeah. again, it's their it's their yeah. It's the same thing. I jumped out of an airplane. Hmm. I don't want to jump out of an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many how many? Do you remember the name of the first girl that you shot with? The very 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 first Mason girl. Mason Storm. Mason Cherokee. Storm. Cherokee was with a movie, Fluff and Fold. My 20-year anniversary, February 16, is coming up, which is my 20-year, marks my 20-year nice. porn anniversary, we call it. <laughs> and a girl named Cherokee okay. that I worked for. And who was the last girl that you worked with? The last girl, I worked with two oh. at the same time. Gracie something and... Uh, Terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they were just sweetheart young girls. Yeah. Darling, absolutely darling, and just two of them at the same time. Yeah, it was VR. So VR, VR is very interesting. What's VR? Explain that. Virtual reality. Virtual reality is <clears throat> uh you wear the you wear the the goggles or you wear the the the, the head yep. thing. Mm. And then However you look, you can see the room, and then you look down, and you can see the girl. So what happens is... I get your real point of view. Yeah. So let's say this was a VR shoot. This, ca this, this microphone instead would be a black box with two lenses, and it would be placed where my natural eyes would be. So it would be here on a jib, stuck, and I would sit here. And then the view of the lenses would be all around, pretty wide aspect and you can see basically my chest and my legs down and myself here and my hands and whatever and then the girl would be in front performing whatever she was on me right oh, that's how they so do it. i can't kiss them or nothing i can i might be so able to that, use my hands or is stuff. that the disconnect then yeah very disconnected so is it hard for you to bust a nut when you're in that disconnect stage or can you do it or do you have to stop from busting a nut well there's four things a guy has to do in our business anyway yep and timely and that's get hard yep when they say all right it's time to go and stay hard yep throughout not come that's where i'm fucked and then when it's time do it within at least 10 minutes or half hour or an hour <laughs> that's because <laughs> some guys take longer or whatever maybe so i've been blessed in the respect where i managed to be able to do all four within a good sense of time. So you time. tick all the boxes, so to speak. You tick all the boxes. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and you so, know, I, I, I love women. I love the female form. I love the sex. I, I've been a sexual person, you know. Uh, so how I manage to be good at what I do, who knows? Whatever, porn gods have been blessed me or something, I don't know. And I, and I just, uh, like I, I've always, my career was, I, in my career, I realized that my career would be based upon my rapport with the girls. Right. If I was a dick, 
Yeah. What? Who wants to do? Now there is Dick. Guy? There is dicks in the industry. I, of course. I, male dicks, right? Yeah, that are real dickheads. That are not. Well, yeah. they're. That's just them naturally, and yeah. then they've decided to be in this business. You know, yeah. there's. I guess there's a two types of guys in the world. Yeah. Guys who love girls. Yeah. Guys who don't. Yeah. Maybe they want to mistreat them or something. I don't want to do that. I, I love them and want to kiss them and hug them and so do you collect th- them and hey. Me, but, yeah, yeah. Do you, you know, think that you acting that way towards them and and you showing them kindness and love, so to yeah, speak, does that they really gravitated to that? And does that ease the for you? Does that ease the maybe the I'm a porno guy just fucking bitches on camera? Does that sure. it does right? Mm. Yeah, because that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, I realize that's what I do. I'm yeah. doing that. But again, in my care during this moment of whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for them. Are you okay? I'm not hurting you. I'm making sure I'm holding them up in a certain way or this and that. And, you know, I, I got a great reputation for myself back when I first started. A lot has changed. I've been 20 years. You, there's a lot of different generations come yeah. in. You know, when I, the, the last girl I worked with, she said, I wasn't even born when you started. I was like, well, <laughs> and, and, I don't and that's think a any... different world yeah, now. It's right. a whole different world wow. now. It's yeah. a lot. It's a real different world in the respect where, you know, there's so much, uh, you know, like behavioral things. You know, it's everything's so consent now. It's all this and that. You know, and yeah. you got to be careful, and you got to, you know, and I've always, like, even through that Me Too movement. Mm. You know, I've had guys be like, man, I'm nervous. I'm like, what are you nervous for? He goes, I don't know. I'm just, somebody's going to call me out. I'm like, I said, I've, I've always been a gentleman, so I, I'm mm. not worried about any of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's you know a really saying? good way. And I suppose you want the people to like you. You want the girls yeah, to like I, you, and you don't want to become Not be them. like, oh, that yeah. guy, what the yeah, fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you kind of fuck a lot of things up for me, Tommy. I'm not going to lie. It's hard for me to jack off over porn that you're in now. It's hard for me to jack off over porn that Marcus London's in. Well, yeah. So you guys are cutting off, like, a lot of fan base sure, me sure. because uh, it's like you're my mates now, so it's a little bit difficult. Right. Do, 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 I've do, had people and say friends that be- and you know, say, I can't even watch it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't so, even watch it now. You know. Yeah. Um, do you get recognized sometimes? Daily. Be, you get, like, yeah. by women or men? Men, yeah. mostly. Yeah. And how are they to you when they're they like, fucking legend, Tommy Gunn, the legend. It's, they, yeah. uh, it's a number of different ways. You know, I'll get like a, you know, like from across the way, like a. Yeah. And I'm going. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself. Yeah. Who are you looking at? Yeah. And then I realized, oh shit, I, I've been over a yeah. thousand porn. How many movies? Thirty five hundred at this point. So how m- about that? What'd like you- I probably, f- you know, from a from a from a what do they call that? A body count? Is that body what count. Yeah. Is? What are you? Probably three and a half thousand. Five thousand. Like five thousand. Which is like yeah. unbelievable because I was the shyest kid in school. Yeah. So scared of girls because I was like, my brother would say, "Hey, you know." This girl, psst, whatever, such and such likes you. And I go, really? He goes, yeah, that's great, right? And I'm like, no. Mm. Fuck, now I got to figure out a new way to get to English class. Yeah. Instead of seeing her in the, in the, in the hallway on the way to class, now yeah. I see her, I know she likes me. I'm like, oh, God. now yeah. I'm going to go all the way around the high school to get to, to class because I was nervous. And I, what am I going to say? Hi, how, how are you, whatever. Tell I wish I could a, go back to do high school yeah, over. Yeah, and then you had a time machine. I'm shy now. You know, but in I mean? 15 years, I'm going to be doing something. And I'm still kid. quite shy, to be honest with you. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Have you, have you got a girlfriend at the moment? You got love? I've always got love in my heart yeah. for someone, and they just, you know, I speak to someone yeah. regularly, but she's far away. In the industry? No, not in the industry. That's, that's good. So Yeah, that's good. But I... I long for someone, yeah. but it's tough because it's a hard thing because, uh, you know, I've, I've been, I've been in moments where I've been, I feel like kind of taking it, not a taking advantage of, but like, like a, like a, like a check on the, on the headboard yeah, for yeah. a girl. Yeah. 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 Of course. You don't want to be there. And it didn't. Turn out to be anything, and I thought, oh, that's so, that's so funny. Mm. And they, in their mind, maybe like, yeah, they got the, 
you know, I fucked Tommy Gunn. Yeah. But I'm not going to become of it. And I was like, well, that's okay, yeah. whatever. Like, that's happened. Yeah. And I was yeah, it like, would. Oh. I mean, I suppose it would. Um, look, I suppose what comes with what you do is certain, certain, I don't want to say problems, but there's issues that come along yeah, with it. There's yeah. a lot of good. Like, I just don't know who wants to bring me home to their mom. Right. Right. And even if you did get brought home to mum, you would always have in the back of your head, fuck, does her mum know? And or, or would you always be open with her? Would you be open with your in-laws about it? You'd have to be, right? You can't yeah, hide something like that. At this point. Yeah, at this point. Years <laughs> in year, you you to, can't fucking hide it. Yeah. What? How, how long we got left here? You know, because, uh, I should have done a two-hour one today, but it just it just gives me the incentive to... We, we are about out of time. All right. But, so you know, I'll, I'll wrap it up in a second. Alrighty. I'll wrap it up in a second. Um, the beauty about podcasting and what I like to do is, you know, I like to talk to different people and if once you forget that the cameras are here and you forget that the mics are here and you yeah. start getting into these in-depth conversations with your friend and then you start hearing things about the industry and it's such an interesting uh, topic that everyone wants to come into it. I didn't even touch on half of what I wanted to touch on with no. Tommy. I didn't get to touch on about his off-terrain vehicle. I didn't get to touch on you know, his music and, and his his dog, and there's a bunch of things. So what I'm going to say is when you are back here sure. in January. Come by again. Can we do this? Please, can we, can we do part two of this? Please. Can we do that? Yes, absolutely. Because I, I would love to, I love to share, you know, whatever. Yeah, I and it's good with. insight because people are interested. Has this been interesting to you, Chase? This has been really, like, insightful, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, I just I always mention this with you and your guests is like, you know, I you always bring in the most genuine people and you know, real sees real and you know, I I appreciate you coming in, brother. Oh, I'm glad to be here. It's wonderful. Well, I've always stayed in contact and I've known Tommy. Actually, you came to Christmas at my house yeah, one year. I remember. Back in 2012, maybe. Yeah, they had yeah. a big Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. And um That and was you, the last time I was with a with that girl, the, the blonde girl. The blonde one, what was her Cameron. name again? Cameron D. Cameron that D. Was a lo- that was the last time I was in a relationship. And that one fucked you up bad afterwards too, right? Well, I, you know. You I got just, a big heart, Tommy. And it I got a big heart. And when, it, when things end, it's like, oh, Yeah, I, I know. I know. What's your star sign? Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. Stubborn. Well, there's that. There's that. But the positive side is that, you know, just very. Yeah. Loving and all those other good and things. And everyone says that about you. Just, everyone does. Marcus always speaks well of you. Kel, Kelly, yeah, yeah. she loves you as well. So, look, obviously we're going to do this again. But in, in closing, what what's your message? Like, what do you want people to know? If you, if you, could, if you, mm, could, if you could say geez. something. Do you have a message for, for people that are listening to this or – in just a in in a, in in a, a whole in, in, scope of just life type it, thing. Yep, it could be a sentence, it could be a word, it could be a mantra, it could be whatever. What what's your if you could what's your message? I, well, I get even this. after all these years, right now I'm still like, what the fuck yeah. am I gonna do? Mm. <laughs> really? Yeah. Here I am now at this age, and I've done those things and whatnot. You know, what's next for me? I don't know. I'm scared to death. Scary. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. I'm really am. I feel that way as well. And, you know, every day or damn near close to that, you hear about, oh, such and such dropped dead the other day. I yep. go, yeah. what? He yep. was only what? Yep. 42? I was like, yeah. Yep. I, I'm with you on that. Capture the moment, whatever it is. Time is fleeting. It waits for no man. And Capture the get moment. out there and do stuff, man. Hurry up, because before you know it, you've blinked, and you've it's fucking 30 two years. Two times, and... three times, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's so much I want to do right now, you know? It's like, here we are just before Christmas. It's such a horrible time for me. Sad. I don't know why. I want it to be more uplifting. Now you look on these Instagrams and all these others about manifesting and saying these things. You got to say these things over and over. To You got to visually see yourself doing whatever it is you want to do you know whatever makes you happy do and i'm like i don't know what makes me happy i know what makes me momentarily happy because happiness is a pursuit it's a it's not a pers- you know that's what they call it the pursuit of happiness Absolutely. happiness is not every yeah. moment of your life mm. life is just about kind of stealing moments that kind of happen if anything cherish relate t- cherish time with someone things will never Things are things. You can't take them with you. Uh, 
memories, hopefully, if in, unless you're, you're, it's tragic and you have like Alzheimer's or dementia and you don't have those memories after all these wonderful things you've done as a person in your life. Mm. It's not the destination or the journey. It's the company you have. Absolutely. You know, and I, like right now, I just want to love the shit out of some girl mm. right now. Yeah. But I don't know where she's at. She's, and there, I, she's, she's not there. here right now. She's, there, she's not here, but she's there somewhere. She's out there, and it's just she's out there. It's, a, it's a terrible feeling because I all, I think to myself, who would want me? I Dang think that, all these girls. Uh, Nobody wants to be like that's my guy. Well, I'm actually, proud of him for the, all that. There is there is. I don't some, know. Maybe they I say believe there's somebody that, for everybody, but I don't know. Because once again, that is only going to be a part of who you are. Who you are is who you are, which is it's your not, heart. It, that, it's what not you what do. I do. It's no. Who, it's not who I am. It's what I did. It, yeah. It's plus, not, I'm on the ass end of it. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do next. I love building stuff and welding yeah. and my off-road stuff, and I just wanted to love the shit out of some girl. I just, I feel like uh, I'm affectionate, very affectionate guy, and affection is like air for me, at least. Yeah. I yeah. need to be affectionate and mm. love and hug on someone. Yeah. It's that day. <laughs> it's that day. <laughs> You know, it's fucking so that's, there. you know, one might think, oh, this guy gets to have all these sex with all these girls. And don't get me wrong. It was momentarily nice, mm. but it's like having a big, long jacket. A jacket is a rap sheet. A rap sheet is, you know, yeah. from, an, from an analogy standpoint, it's yeah. crimes you've committed. Not that I've committed crimes, but somebody would say, well, he's got a long jacket in the respect that. Well, he's had a lot of sex with a lot of girls. Can they live with that? I actually went on a, I was trying to put together a show, some sort of television show concept or whatnot, or podcast, uh, something, I don't know, because I love being in front of the camera, or not even in front of the camera, but I love to entertain somebody yeah. and talk in mm. whatever capacity that would be. Uh, and I had this kind of a blind date that we shot, and that was the girl's. He's like, I love him to death. He's so great and he's so this and so nice. But the hardest thing that I would have to live with is the amount of girls he's been with. I, I just couldn't. But I couldn't accept that. Here's where I would look at it, though. Can you imagine how fucking badass the chick is that you get that goes, I don't give a fuck about what he's done. I love if him. If you're out there, I dare you to show yourself. because she, She's fucking out there, Tommy. She's got to be some spectacular. I, and that's, that's what I'm saying. That's something. How, that's how I look at it. Like your next girl, the girl that you get is going to be a fucking badass woman because she's going to accept you and what you've done for your profession. That's not going to bother her. And for someone to be able to accept you and that not... She's got to be a fucking badass chick. Trust me, she's out there. Yeah, yeah. No, I right. feel like she's yep. out there. She is. They say there's, well, you know, there's how many? Eight billion. Yeah. I only want one. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucked a billion of them, but he only <laughs> wants one. Tommy Gunn. I only want one, man. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Likewise. We're this is do, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do part two in This January. could be like a 10-hour episode. Uh, it could have been. It totally, could have been. Actually, absolutely. so the next one we'll definitely do for a two-hour one. Thanks for coming in, oh, brother. Thanks so much. Thank Guys, you. we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you watching. And don't forget, 2024 is coming up. This was the last podcast of the year. Ah, oh, there that's you go. Great, the last man. podcast of the fucking year. <laughs> Chase, thank you very much for everything this year, my brother. I appreciate your help and your knowledge and your love and your professionalism over the last few months that I've been here. Oh, I really respect my you. My pleasure, man. It's been really, it's been really excellent. And uh, next year is just going to, we're just about to, you know, I'm going to bend next year over and fuck it. You and me both, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, thanks oh, for listening. <laughs> this is Marcus Deegan for the Marcus Deegan Show here in Vegas. We're out. <laughs>